because we are probably going to be on video. <clears throat> so. I showered. That's good. No, oh, that's good. these microphones. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hi there, Ann. <laughs> oh. Let me know when you're ready, Ann. Okay. All right. We're going to call the meeting to order today and um, let the record reflect that all members are present except for Susan Gay, who says she's probably going to be late. She hopes to make it, in fact. So, um, approval of minutes. Have, has everyone read the minutes? Any, yes. yes. Any changes or anything? Yes. I didn't see any. Okay. No recommended changes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I accept a, a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Correspondence. Um, I haven't received any. I don't think we've received any. I don't think I have anything. Sorry. Other than the um, application from Dave. Yeah. Defen Defenderfer. Oh. <laughs> Defendorfer? Defendor, is that, is that Does that sound right? That sounds Put enough close. syllables in there. <laughs> yeah. Where is he? <laughs> he could correct us. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to, that's under new business, but let's um, talk about old business now. Continue discussion on potential crosswalk on Rehoboth Avenue between 4th and 5th Streets. Um, I, I brought this to the attention of the commissioners, both Susan and I talked about it, about the need for it. And the mayor talked about that there was a study in the past. I don't remember a study. John, you were with me back in the old days. I, we talked about it, but I don't think there was ever a study by made by, you know, mm -hmm. Del Dot or anything. Do you no, know of one? No, certainly wasn't. Yeah, I can so look I, back in the in the Kathy's um, body of work and see if there's something in there, but I don't recall it. Yeah, I remember reviewing pretty much everything. Well, the whole idea with this, of course, was to get Del Dot involved uh, in the idea that we should have this crosswalk and we wanted to consult with them but the mayor wanted us to look at the prior plan which i have not been able to locate i've not spoken to him about it you know could you tell me where it is but i i will in any case um hello i'll do some and digging I don't, and kevin wasn't there kevin you don't know about any um study by del dot for the crosswalk across Rehoboth avenue between fourth and fifth yeah, I, the mayor brought it up um, that there had been one, and I don't remember it from my previous time. So anyway, do we well, all? Our friend from the shoe store, I can't think of his name, Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> What's Dennis. Name? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis Steele. <laughs> Dennis was always hot on that topic, so he may have done his own little study. I do remember his yeah. presentation, which probably was a part of our record back, you know, several years ago. Um, I think we all still believe that a crosswalk is needed there, don't we? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I, did, I had a meeting with Chief Banks and discussed it. Mm -hmm. And his feeling was yes, but we need to get the engineers involved because of how awkward that space is. Right. Right. That it could be two separate pathways as opposed to one continual crosswalk just right. because of the way it's chopped up between Lake and Forth. Mm -hmm. and the That's turnarounds, et cetera. It's a perfect example of how the, you know, the streets were laid out without necessarily thinking through. And yeah, one thing leads to another. Sure. But the uh, Main Street project that uh, put the medians in place and altered where some of the turn lanes were, that's now there. So unless there's going to be an effort to reconfigure how traffic goes, I think we're kind of stuck with the configuration that's there and then allow that to almost naturally lead to, okay, what makes the most sensible place for the crosswalks? Uh, if I, I'm not far from that intersection, if I'm gonna walk over to anything that's over by a Culture Pearl, the convenience store that's there, the liquor store that's there, it's a mess getting across. You, can, you, know, you have to use the existing crossways. There's simply no obvious place to put it. 
you know, most people run across the street. I know I do. <laughs> I run across the street to dogfish. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So, Kevin, you may have an idea. How do we how do we get Dell Dot involved with a recommendation for that intersection? Uh, I think you know it's been what 15, 16 years now since they did that. So they're probably about ready to to resurface. Uh, Rehoboth Avenue. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, they've paved asphalt's good for about 15 years, and it's hung in there pretty well. So it would be appropriate, I think, to just send a letter from the city, from the committee, or maybe from the board saying, hey, uh, we know that you're about due for a resurfacing on Rehoboth Avenue. When you get ready to start planning for that, you know, we want to be engaged and maybe offer some suggestions, whether it's a crosswalk at Dogfish or do away with a crosswalk walk right at the circle or whatever. But um, be part of that discussion because I Absolutely. know they will have to be doing. They will probably be looking to do some changes, so we, and I would think the surfacing, resurfacing, would be pretty soon. We also talked about in the past how some of the curbing, the radius of some of the curbing, is not appropriate for U-turns, mm. like watching the jolly trolley turn around with the trailer, for example, because it was never. You probably know from you can turn left coming out of Christian Scarborough, but some of those don't really work well if you're turning around looking for a parking space. Right. So maybe that would be an opportunity to get a little change in the radius too, if they're gonna. Mm -hmm. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a, a comment along with that, the, the median in that area where Christian, Scarborough, and Rehoboth come together was specifically designed in order to seemingly prohibit people from U-turning at that section. It's <laughs> not that it was a not efficient design, it was a purposeful design to eliminate that. And of course, it doesn't mean anything. People just turn around. People just do what people are going to do. Right. But sure. yeah. Sure. That'll always be the case. Um, so uh, it seems to me the step that we need to take, uh, since nobody is aware, and you're going to check your uh, folder there um, about previous um, engineer plans on the crosswalk. And I will talk to the mayor um, before, um, hopefully, maybe after this meeting or early next week. Um, to try to, if he knows about this, then fine. But um, we, I'm going to press that we do try to get uh, Del Dot down here to speak with us, particularly if, in fact, they are going to repave. It's something for us to probably put on um, the next agenda is to um, quest reconfiguration of, of, and I'm not in a big way, but reconfiguration of, of a Rehoboth Avenue, maybe. Something to talk about if there's something. It could something. be on the checklist. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I want to clarify: um, isn't it true, Kevin? Like they can't do a crosswalk unless there's a street intersection. Like we couldn't do a crosswalk in the middle of the block to access. You can. Like, you can. We do have them. That's why there's there are lights there. Those flashing lights, right? I mean, isn't that why the flashing lights are at those, well, those crosswalks? Are, those are ADA compliant. Because doesn't it have to be an ADA ramp on each side? Uh, if we're going to put a crosswalk, yes, especially over yeah. at Del Dot Street, right? Uh, I'm not sure about the the laws with respect to can you have a crosswalk mid block? I would uh -huh. assume you can, but I, I don't know that. Okay, okay I maybe I was that getting that mixed fact. up with something else, but right. because that uh, where it may be handy if we did have one in the middle of the block, uh, that may go against the uh, the codes and laying out streets and signage. Well, we ran into that down on um, Byard. There's a place that you need to crosswalk, and on the other side, there's nothing there. It's just a sidewalk. And we were told not, not to do that because it wasn't an intersection with anything to connect to. I think they did finally put it in, didn't they? I don't remember. Now, what street was that, John? On Byard. Oh. Yeah. The other thing, I'll send Dennis an email and ask him if he can remember. Okay. Because if, if he was actively engaged in that, he should remember. But it just makes sense we should have a crosswalk at every block on Rehoboth Avenue. That, and there's long sections where we don't, that, you know, from third. I, I think we do it at all of the intersections. In we there? do. We okay, because it's, okay. There could be one that's possibly where a fourth got blocked. That's the one where, that's when we got to get the engineers to look at particularly if there's a repave. It's a perfect time for them to get, a, get in, involved in that. Yeah, I 
I'm pulling up a Google map right now to see. Um, let me look at Because the overhead shots are pretty good in terms of the. You can see pretty good detail as yeah. to what's on the pavement. So you can see the crosswalks. Um, so there's one at State. That's right. got strobes. Right. So this stretch right here is where we're uncovered. Right. I'm just looking to see if there's any place else. So what's this one? That's a crosswalk, and it's not yes. an intersection. Summer House to City Hall. Yeah. So there is there are crosswalks. Okay. Um, just kind of quickly looking through here. That's the main place on the avenue. I mean, there's one down near Penny Lane, but um, that's where the turnaround is. So but that doesn't know. go anywhere. That yeah, just goes, yeah. To the that just goes to the middle. Yeah, well, they're parking. People pot yeah, potentially right. would, would cross right. there. Um, but not so, on the other side. Right, right. That would be another thing we could put on the list because there's median access on one side and not on the other side. Yeah, I mean, crosswalks. <laughs> I think crosswalks in general on the avenue um, are should be discussed. I mean, there's no reason why not to. Um, but yeah, How much this, notice would you get if Del Dot was going to repave? <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a feel for... In my experience here, they haven't been as good about the outreach to where they're going to go work. Like they just came and paved, you know, a section of surf and all the way down to Doville Beach parking lot. You know, we didn't know about it that ahead of time. How important was that? They did some paving on Columbia, their road uh, patching. You know, we weren't really made aware of it. Um, so they're good about some things. We get a lot of notice on the bridge work and that kind of thing, but we don't necessarily get it on the, the patching and street paving. So... Um, I just use the 15 year mark as hey, they got to be doing right. it here pretty soon. It's um, imminent. Yeah, so I would think it's in their planning process. It should be by now for another year or two. They would want to execute it, I would think. Okay. So, as I said, I will speak with the mayor and also we'll put this on our next agenda. I mean, we all agree the consensus is there needs to be a crosswalk there because it's so dangerous. Yeah, agreed. Um, right, between 4th and 5th, yeah. yeah. Lake, Lake, 4th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you pull, when, I mean, I'm sure you do, you pull up Google Maps and you can get a good, really good overhead view of the avenue, and you can see the where the crosswalks are and the distance, and I think in the last the minutes I had or the presentation I made to the commissioners, I mean, it's, it's a very long stretch. Anyway, okay. Any <laughs> Anything else on this topic? Anyone? I think we're good. Okay. Um, continue discussion on possible streetscape on King Charles. Um, I know, generally speaking, we were mostly in favor. I think that Don and you were not particularly in favor mm -hmm. of this idea. Mm -hmm. Would you all like to discuss this some more in terms of the pluses, minuses? The, the original objective was to get crosswalks on that stretch right. of the road for all the people going to and from the beach. So three years ago, we were going to get crosswalk stripes on one, the north side of each intersection. Then that never happened. Then we learned through Kevin that because of the distance, there needs to be a landing space in between. Right. So that, of course, then gets awkward because it has to have, from my conversation with Chief Banks, it has to have the little round bumps so that, because it's, it's not just a person in a wheelchair, it's also someone that could be sight impaired. So they have to have the ability to feel. So then that involves a little bit of work in the, in the pavement. So then it becomes more expensive and requires more lead time and budgeting. So then if we get to the point of we're going to have landing pads, well, then should there be a median there? Because it couldn't just be paint right? because you have to have the feel. So then if it's going to be paint, well, could it be nicer like Scarborough, which has some really nice old growth? So 
And Bayard has a Bayard has a Bayard, median as well. Same way. So and Bayard has median end curves, right? Mm -hmm. So that stretch of the road is from what we've learned, speed's not really an issue because apparently the sense of space actually calms people down because <laughs> you think it's a racetrack, but it's not. So then if we're gonna put something in the middle, do we have the opportunity to put bicycle lanes on either side between Lake and the church till we get up to where the American Legion is where things start to get narrow? So could we have bike lanes in there? So then it becomes, okay, a median, with plantings and then bike lanes and how much space do we have to work with because there's also a conversation about taking the parallel parking and making it diagonal, which I understand got quite a bit of pushback. So- Pushback? Pushback, yeah. yes. So then which way are the cars gonna be? Then how much do we have to work with? So there's a lot of dominoes. Well, well there is and so what I think, what I thought our goal should be is to um, ask the commissioners to budget an item to have engineers design a street. I call it a streetscape. I guess in some ways it is a streetscape um, there. Well, yes. Pat, I think how you introduced this at the last meeting was you were anticipating more federal funds for such an extensive project, mm -hmm. and that's what held us up on the other ideas we had. Right. So I think that's excellent to be anticipating that there might be more federal funds, but rather than jumping into King Charles, I think we look at all those other projects we had talked about earlier and had delayed, and then we prioritize all of those. Like we talked about doing widening the street on surf and getting rid of the gravel or you mm -hmm. know, expanding mm -hmm. the shoulders, doing parking, doing, making it safer for bikers. And we do have it. a design for that. And, and, and that section also coming off the boardwalk, that's tricky when people come off the boardwalk and, uh, or, or the bikers are coming up from the trail and they want to enter that section by Henlope and Acres. So we had a big project there. But I just think we look at all those projects that we talked about that would, throughout town that we thought would be good and make a list and then we prioritize them, which ones we think first, you know, should be done. And I, I would just put a priority on some of the other projects, you know, the surf, the, the shoulders, widening them so it's safer for bikers and pedestrians and cars and things like that, getting rid of the gravel in certain places. I would even look at Henlopen and Columbia, if we could pave the shoulders there and make that safer. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> See, I big items. In there too. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but I would just, I just think those are more of a priority than King Charles. And Remember the horses. Remember the horses. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, so we had an opportunity there when it was all torn up and the water pipe was being replaced and the ocean outfall, we had an opportunity there to, because now you got people in this, people walking, trailers, those oh, beach buggies, bicycles. Well, now refresh my mind, what is wrong with paving the shoulders on Henlope? Not taking away people's parking, or what's wrong with just taking that gravel shoulders? They didn't want it. I mean, and they, paving they said, it. They simply did not want Push it. Back. Because you're taking, there's, if, you, if you ride along there and look at all the cars that are parked there, that is parking space for almost every residence on Hill Open Avenue. Right, but that, if you that just, right away. But we're not talking about curbing. We're not talking about, it, it, uh, we could paint if it to demarcate spaces, but there's not gonna be meters. I mean, you know, I, I think they might want paving, or I think we could stand up for that and push back <laughs> I, I think, Kevin, you can uh, tell us about this one. Well, yeah, uh, we don't, uh, nobody wants to relive that experience. <laughs> um, but just in general, we would say, I would say, uh, putting on my other hat, that the gravel provides some nice st stormwater mitigation because yeah. now the, the water will infiltrate instead of run down the pavement. So less pavement, in my mind, for the stormwater side of the house, less pavement is good. You want grass, you want gravel, you want dirt, sand, that kind of thing. But isn't there pavement now that is water permeable? Haven't oh. they developed that? Probably costs an arm and a leg, but did I read that someplace? There is permeable asphalt. Oh, okay. So and it's less expensive because there's not as much of it? 
<laughs> yeah, of course, right. It's got uh, air you, pockets. We have it here in the in the parking lot, and we oh in really? The, right in the staff parking lot, oh. and then the convention center parking lot. Oh, so and that's you go, possible. Go take a look at it and see how excited you are about it. <laughs> I never noticed any difference, you know, in those right. lots. You don't like it? What's the problem? It, uh, much with harder it? to maintain. And when it was built, we didn't have the ability to maintain it because you needed a vac truck, not a sweeper, because the sand particles get in it, then it's no longer permeable. So we physically, the city did not have the ability to maintain it. So we didn't. So now they're all plugged up with sand, silt, and everything else, and they're just like regular pavement. Well, Except they've all settled about a half inch. Right. So, so, you're so. Sa so you're saying, like, what kind of equipment do you need to maintain a, need a, a vacuum? vacuum? A vacuum. Sweeper. And the brush we have is. Vacuum. Right. We just got the vacuum this past year. So, so we do have a vacuum. Uh, correct. But it, it, for this, it's overcome by events, right? It's, okay. it's so okay. plugged up it's, now that okay. the vacuum will get it. So, uh, and if you go look at it, you'll see how it's settled differently than the other asphalt. So and there's another thing to consider. But yes, well, they do have permeable okay. pavement. I don't know that we've I used it. would do individual parking spots, but yeah, yeah you got to be somewhere well, that you're going to go sweep with the vacuum uh, once right. a week or so to keep the, the, the floors clear. They have the permeable street. Permeable street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just think it's very dangerous for bikers when they're biking yeah. in the gravel. And there's too many streets with that, especially if they're hand loping when the state is guiding bicyclists to, to those important routes. Right. And, and like bikers can't get out of the way because they're going through the gravel. They don't know it's rough for them. They can have accidents or, or just when the gravel's on the pavement and it's, it's dicey. And you have lots of pedestrians walking. They're walking with their strollers. But and you're still going to have people parked there. Sure, not sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, but if you don't curb, I'm not talking about curbing, because I think curbs interfere with everybody. Curbs create problems for cars, bikes, pedestrians, everybody. So I think you leave the curbs out. But you put the pavement in so that people can park. The gravel wouldn't get on the road. allows a little better surface for bikers where there isn't, you know, uh, if there's nobody parked there, a biker can swing over to that area if someone wants to pass them. So maybe I that would be an opportunity when federal funding comes downstream for cyclists in the in the new new federal budget. I think that's too narrow. I'd go well, for it. I, I we think need it now. That if you if you look at what we're talking about and all the opportunities that we have, I think getting Henlope and Avenue would be kind of down the list because that I mean, just got repaved. Yeah, for me hmm. it would. I mean. I'd much rather see the Surf Avenue widen. I'd much rather see, um, well, the other thing with uh, um, King Charles is the idea of more green. Yes. You know, there's, mm -hmm. It's all pavement. So stormwater management, um, heat island issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, that's, I'm, I wouldn't put that one at the top of my list, but it is mm -hmm. on the list. But there's an opportunity there to remove some pavement and put in some permeable, attractive plants, trees, et cetera. Yeah. I want to go back to King Charles. Uh, That's what we're talking about, that one, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we have this from way back in 2012. We have maps of bicycle lanes and all that. You have a copy. I do. David. I do, too, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I recommend that. My other comment is, since we have so many people from the beach crossing, could we at least have a sleeping policeman there? I mean, more, more of them along two King down Charles. There, there, David. Well, I, I think we're waiting for two more at, at Hickman Grove and State, from what I remember. That's yeah, but we're talking the, about. But people. Kevin is down. How many people are you down this summer? Uh, seven. Yeah, so, <laughs> wow. So there's so staff. There's well, staffing well, issues. At, right. At, uh, mm -hmm. and Hickman. Hickman, yes. That's a much higher traffic for, for that's motor fun. vehicles. That's for motor vehicles. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm talking about people coming off the beach. That King Charles is just, I mean, I know you said you never have any cross, trouble crossing there, but I think that's because people know it's dangerous and they slow down. Oh, I've had a lot of people just stop and wait and wave you over. But it really, we need some kind of a crossing mark there. If we can't put a crosswalk, how about just a sleeping policeman? Yeah. That's so let's, let's recommend that as, as plan A, because it could yeah. be done quickly and affordably. That well, could be done quickly. So usually the sleeping policeman's there when there's a crosswalk. 
Yeah. So, but they do work. We 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 know now from Canal, Hickman, and State. Yeah. No crosswalks yeah. because we don't have ADA lips on the west side of State. Right. And we and on the east side of State, they don't point in the proper direction, so they're not appropriate for ADA. But the silent policemen do have an effect because I spend time there in the car and on the bicycle and walking and that people do stop. Yeah. And, and I, would, I would say that in the summer of entitlement and people being impatient, I've noticed more people stopping at them and more people paying attention to the strobes out here too. It's yeah. Yeah. slowly catching on. So they, they work there, and I would imagine they would have the same effect on King Charles. And there's another one there at Laurel on, on King Charles, that, on, so yes. that people would, would be yeah. kind of kind expecting them. Yeah, yeah, that's at yeah, a crosswalk yeah. with a church. But so The other thing to think about there is that where, where it's parallel park, or not parallel, where it's head-end parking, whether you're on a bike or pedestrian or car, you have to pull so far out into King Charles in order to see the traffic. So, so the street width is really dramatically cut down by the parking. Yeah, but, but that's the big problem is having to pull out far enough onto the street so you can see whether traffic's coming or not. From well, like at Hickman or where, the places the where... You're talking about where you the cross street. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, coming, yeah, and that's where people are crossing, to the beach. Right, so, Kevin, could we, could we in fact, put uh, those sleeping policemen on King Charles, what, just in the middle of the road? What do they say now? State law stop for pedestrians and crosswalkers, something like that. There's, yeah. different, there's different terminology you can get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can say slow for pedestrians. Maybe so. They're affordable and they need an impact drill, from what I remember. Exactly. Yeah. You think we could just do those? We need the chief is not here, but I know his tag team here. His wingman is missing That's in a, action right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, he's watching you online and laughing. <laughs> okay. Could. Could you send me an email and let me know what our options are in terms of signage that accompanies those? Or have the chief, ask the chief of whoever. Sure. Yeah. I think we have to actually modify the ones. I'll send you a picture of the ones at my house, and then that's got the, that's got the proper verbiage, I think. I, and I think it made a difference there. Oh, yeah. With people crossing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm pleasantly, it's, it's worked out really well. Yeah. So now, now the radius is good. People are stopping. Yeah. So the idea right now, uh, as far as King Charles is, is, is concerned, a short-term solution is let's get a few sleeping policemen. Right. Um, and I think there's consensus to do that, yes? Yes. 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 Yeah. And um, we... You'll let us know what kind of, are we going to let, let us know what you have on your Yeah, street. I'll just send you a picture this afternoon of the, of the graphics. So, yeah, something that's not crosswalk related, but will perhaps slow people down, you know, careful pedestrians present or, I don't know, something. Okay. Um, well, Pat, as far uh, as yes. the whole idea of um, infrastructure projects and prioritizing, that is not on the agenda right now, but let's put it on the next agenda yeah. specifics. Did I do that? I just did it here. Prior, prioritize recommended projects for future. Yeah, yeah. So that way, when we talk about future agenda items, um, we'll talk about all of the possible um, infrastructure projects. One, you know, being, of course, we've talked about in the past was Surf Avenue. And I, so there was a design it's been sometime last year. There was a design for the park. What's what do they name that park where the playground is? Lake Girard Park or where the uh, that little triangle is? Yeah. Well, I guess the it was a combination, wasn't the lake the, Avenue the, phase uh, two? The um, Stokely. Oh no 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 the Lake Girard Park I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had done kind of a master plan for that in the city. Right. 
Right. That didn't gain any traction. Right. No, I remember quite right. yeah. well. Didn't gain any traction. Yeah. It's, so it and was I elaborate. think it was very elaborate. So I mean, I, I don't think that should be off the table. It's just that we possibly don't want necessarily what was proposed but I still think proposed. I still think that there's something that could be done there that would take the idea of getting people off the boardwalk to the bike path getting people you know down surf avenue in a, in a more uh, convenient way so we'll put that on we'll, we'll talk about that as a priority okay. item next time okay Okay. Yeah. Look at all those projects yeah, and prioritize we'll them, right. and, and which we would with our wish list. Right. Right. Because I, I do believe there'll be some infrastructure dollars coming in, and hopefully, some of this bicycling and so forth will will get some of that. We, we've it got, won't all be stormwater. <laughs> we've got someone in a position of influence who knows this community very well, who's a cyclist. So, I, I think we have an opportunity, at least for the next three years three and a half years, hopefully long, no, next three and a half years. Can't say any more than that. You mean the former governor? No, Please. no, he's the president of the United States. Oh. <laughs> I, I've heard he bike, he, but he bikes in Henlopen Park. <laughs> Can, yeah, okay. he, yeah. <laughs> he knows the state, you know, not to try some of the other trails. <laughs> right, so, so that, that gives us an opportunity, a, a little bit, I think, a little bit of yeah. an edge in terms of some of these things that, particularly on roadways that he travels, that have just been recently repaved and had new crosswalks. Put in open. <laughs> well, ocean, ocean is really nice now. There's ADA pads on both sides, to, just in the sand, uh -huh. to, make, to make compliance. It's, it's really nice. Uh, I was just down yeah. there this morning. You anyway. know, we've done all this work uh, it's, it's hard for me to believe what I read in the paper the other day. We're the most dangerous state in the union. Number five, bicycle, bicycle, bicycle friendly, and number two, most dangerous for cyclists. How about that? And number one for what? Number we're two. number five, bicycle friendly, but we're number two, most dangerous. It's. We were number one, most dangerous for bicycles. That's what Dal uh, We're, we're number two. And, and a lot of it has to do with. with the ISOP, the J1 students, the, the bicycle barn over behind Bed Bath and Beyond, and the inability to educate every single person who's here for the summer on how to ride in the United States, which is not not easy. Well, I, I and then it gets into lack of helmets and a lot of other things. But yeah. I, I think the other thing, in addition to those, Dave, is like the lack of general infrastructure in this area, you know, the encouraging people to come here and build, you know, all the building development we've had, encouraging bikers. It's just asking people to come down when we don't have sufficient infrastructure for them. It's, it's getting better. We've made improvements, and we've got we, we've got issues we're going to discuss here with the with the bike lanes. I think in Rehoboth but, we're getting better, but I think out on Highway One, I mean they've tried, but gosh, I, that's just just so dangerous. Bruce Coffin put a lot of work in on Route One, doing stencils at all the um, sidewalk lips, look both ways, because mm -hmm. you really don't want to ride a bicycle on the shoulder of Route One. No. If you're going to go on Route One, you're going to be on the sidewalk. Well, that's why they spent mm -hmm. ten million and put all those sidewalks on. So, and then somebody gave him on the ticket for being on the sidewalk. <laughs> it's it's a it's a very slowly evolving change, but if if we're ahead of the curve, and we can take advantage of funding that's available, then we can be an example for others to follow. Right let's, now, we're we're playing catch up. Let's let's discuss this for future agenda yes. items because we're off topic right now completely. Yes, and okay. we're running out of time. So yeah. So all right. So um, we've got the consensus on what we're wanting to do. For the time being, with King Charles, um, longer term, we're going to prioritize projects. And this one, perhaps, would be a streetscape. But we will talk about that next time. OK. Um, new business. Um, Dave Def Defenderfer is not here. But Defender he's, he's, very, he's very interested in being on this committee. And I don't think this anybody. Good. We it's always love it when people want to be on our committee. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So yes, please. I'll tell you, let's, let's, uh, um, I'll. Anybody know him? I, I don't know him. I've no. just 
emails, traded okay. emails with him. Yeah, Good resume. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you I might recognize him when we see him. Could, <laughs> could be. Um, well, but I'll entertain a motion. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve or ask this, the uh, city commissioners to approve him for appointing appointment to our committee. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes. Um, all right, height of wayfinding signs for bicycles. Um, I think if all so of you I, looked at your email this morning, right, you would have noticed some, that you've got email took, from Took my Dave. tape measure, took some pictures. <laughs> did you get that, Tim? I did. Okay. So from what I remember from dealing with uh, through Kathy Osterholm with Anthony Aglio three years ago, Gills Neck Road, the height of the signs, this is crazy, that doesn't make any sense. They came down to six feet, far more visible for someone on a bicycle. And as I said before we started, the merge wayfinding signs are very nice, they're very attractive, the font is small, and they're way up in the air. So they're, they're set back from the road, which is good. They don't, they don't interfere with the sight line of the stop sign, which is good. But if they were at six feet, like the ones on Gills Neck Road got moved to, I think they'd be a lot better viewed by people and probably answer a lot of questions that people have about where to go. So, um, Kevin, can you, can you tell me who would, did the installation of those signs? Do we, was it a contractor or did we do it? Merge yeah. It was a contractor. I don't recall the, the, the first state sign. But it's probably something that we could lower them ourselves. Uh, you, your, your staff. Okay. Lowering it on, an pole. Yes. on an existing pole, so just lower it to six feet. So it's f because it's for a bicyclist, and essentially they're just wait, they're not at the right height. Yeah, like I said, you want to do on the check. One definite, well, you took the photograph. I'll email them to you and then. Okay. Yeah. There are some issues with signage over sidewalks have to be very tight. And the signs did impact the, the, the roadway up a bit or not. So it's got to stay. But we would certainly look at the one. If it's one that we could lower easily enough. Yeah. I, I think these are, will be the what you'll not have a problem with these as I remember. Um, I believe there's a square collar at the bottom that has a through bolt and they can either be, the bolt can be taken out and they can be cut off and then rebolted, or the signs could be moved on. Oh, he'll figure right. that out. Right, right, right. So. Yeah, it's like surf and hen looping. Um, he'll send you the ones. In fact, I don't think there's any sidewalks there. No sidewalks. Yeah, so I don't know that it'll be an issue, but if you let, let us know. Yeah, right. No, they're far enough off the road. I think they're, that's not a problem. For, because of that? Oh, is that right? David, while, well, David, while uh, Kevin's looking at this, are there other signs in town you think are too high, bike signs, like the ones with... Um, well, as I discussed with Pat earlier, I've been a little bit involved with some other projects along with Kevin. So um, my, my time has been diverted. Now, um, you know, where's the wood here, man? I got to, hopefully it's all behind me. Well, well if, if there are more, if there are other ones, send, you know. So I should be able to spend a little more time on this and, and really get, again, I, wanna, I made a note to myself to find that there's a standard. To, so uh, if there are other signs, David, if you can just I will. copy all of us. I will. And, and Kevin as well. Good. That would be good. I mean, there's, I think we're in agreement, just generally speaking, that signs for bicyclists need to be at the height for the bicyclists. So, yeah, not a big deal good there. Point. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, there was the additional, and everybody saw this sign, and anybody who's been on the bicycle lately has knows that in the beginning there was a, miss, a sign missing that Del Dot didn't put, control that intersection where you really needed to turn left because it was one way for bicyclists there at the new path. Um, very dangerous. We do have a sign there now. It's not, I wouldn't call it permanent, but I don't know what else would be better there. And Del Dot did add. Mm -hmm. 
right. their original right. you know, learning. What we have is what we're going to get. Uh, we put that arrow sign on the code that that was meant for them. And that's run it straight through. Right. And we still do, in all honesty. Really? And especially in the morning. But they'll run through there, and if they see somebody coming, they just won't touch them in the parking lot, and then we just have to clear them. Um, it's, it's a free-for-all. People are, right. yeah, people are people are scattering. <laughs> the the wide eyes when they get all the way up to the circle is the best. They they go through the cones, they go through the sign, they go past the museum parking lot ramp, and they get and then oh, because of all the cars coming from Columbia, they're coming from Henlopen, they're it's, Oh, it's, it's, it's something else. But I did notice a lot more vertical delineators now to keep the people that were cutting straight across the canal to really effectively block that. That, to me, was the most dangerous because they're on a bicycle trying to do a 90-degree right turn and get across Rehoboth Avenue at a, at a terrible place. Right. It's just So now there's a lot more lined up I saw, I guess I saw this morning. I took yeah. a picture of that last when I was watering the plants at the museum last week. So Monday, I guess it was. Just so I can become more familiar with uh, where where the trouble spots are, what would you estimate are the highest traffic times of day for bicycles? Because when I'm out on mine, Whoa. it's like six in the morning, and it's me and two other people. But you know, when are the real trouble spots? Would well, I you took suggest? a little drive this morning at eight o'clock. And I went out to take the two pictures at Surf and Henlopen Avenue and Ocean Drive. And then I drove down Henlopen to go to the car wash and come back. And I counted 50 bicycles in my trip through town and back out again. At 8 o'clock. Yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is amazing. Well, I can so I can see it and still get to the beach. Hey, I, people are going in every direction. It's, it's yeah, kind of when I was at the farmer's market, I mean, I, I could, if I sat there and counted, I know it would be just hundreds within, you know, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many people are on bikes. We, we haven't had a, De a Dell Dot count since 2018, but the last count, that there, there are actually bicycle counters on, uh, there's one on the Gordon's Pond side, there's one on the junction of Breakswater side. There isn't one on Silver Lake. So we don't know how many bicycles come in and out from Dewey. But the last year we had numbers, there was 100,000 bicycle trips. It was like 55, 45 between Gordon's Pond and the J&B. And that number's got to be way up because the number of bicycles being sold is way up, way, way up. Um, and so... Right, density but, of development close enough in right. to the bicycle as well. So my feeling was it's probably closer to 150,000 bicycle trips now, give or just kind of looking at the history, because I had the data going back, um, which I gave to Bruce. We were going back, because at least he had a pathway to talk to him. Now, what do you mean by a trip coming through town or right. somebody just riding up the block? Would that be counted? If they go over the counter, yes. Oh. There, there's also oh, counters okay. on the new, the new bike, um, pathway next to um, the K Penlopen um, Drive, the ferry terminal, where there's the new bi directional path there, yeah. parallel to K Penlopen Drive. There's also counters in there. So someone, okay. so someone is watching, someone's keeping track. And I think, and, and now, as Kevin and I discussed, there are now bike boxes at, at um, Church Street. Because two years ago, Kevin didn't know what a bike box was. You're absolutely right. So <laughs> we've Not made that the drivers knew. <laughs> Four weeks ago, I didn't so, know. Have so now we know either? there's at least two of us to know what they are, and maybe a few more. The the, the motorists, I'm not so sure. No, that's that's the issue too. But my apologies for leaving. I was three o'clock meeting. Yeah. Which See I you. Had you plenty of time when it was a ten o'clock meeting. See you. <laughs> So um, I, I can speak for other motorists, and the, the people I sit on uh, the beach with all live here in town, except for one couple. They don't know. So part of it may be sharing you know, information. It's also, I, 
I don't know whether this is true. It seems like it's a relatively new way of indicating uh, safety zones. So if we can get more information out there. But my question earlier was trying to get a sense of when some of those high traffic areas are and what the congestion looks like in this particular problem area that's being cited in the agenda item. Uh, when I was coming through at six in the morning, and this was my first time out, okay, I'm on this committee, I gotta get out on the bike, I gotta get out and ride it so I can contribute to the discussion. And I think that in low traffic conditions, the, line, the lanes are actually pretty well marked. It's, if you're paying attention to what's going on, it's easy to figure out where you're supposed to be. If you're not paying attention, you're distracted, or there's a lot of other stimuli, like other riders, it's gonna be a little harder. Um, do we have a sense based on just informal observation during peak times where the people are continuing to try to scoot across unsafely where that right, excuse me, where that left turn is into Grove? I, Chief, in my, my Chief observations. Banks might know, but go ahead. My observation is that in the middle of the, the day when there's a lot of tourists riding their bikes, they, they basically will follow the signs. The people who don't follow the signs are people who actually live around here, or they're people who are, you know, bikers who are, you know, just speeding along, right. and they're just trying to get where they want to get. Time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but I see the majority of people, you know, look and see that sign and, and realize they really have to turn. And there's also, on the pavement, it's a big white arrow pointing this way mm -hmm. that is, you know, indicates it's one way. So mostly I think it's, it's, it's working and I, I, and I think the sign is probably as good as it can be. I don't know whether, what else you could do there. You, you, you don't was, want something that's gonna to be too permanent because then that could be a danger. This is more like a breakaway scenario if somebody hits the, it. The ones that are running it now are gonna do it in violation. That's right. But I, Absolutely. I, I think the signs could be more prominent. You know, if they were red cones, I think they're green cones now. I think if they were red cones, or the sign were a little bigger in red, you know, or even I wonder that turn arrow, if that can be done in red. I, I just think what's there is a good beginning, but I think it just needs to be brighter and more prominent. Yeah. So I, just to. There might be, there, there is some available signage space on, there's a sign there that could maybe, we could take advantage of. There's a signpost already there that we might be able to do something with. Yeah, so on the left side of the picture, if you look at this picture, Donna, see that signpost right there? This morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so what is what is that thing, Donna? These phones have too much intelligence now. So that signpost right there, which has the no left turn for people coming up Canal Street who um, are all blind because they all turn left when they get there. But, but that's, that's not on Canal Street, that's by the-, the, this, is the this is the bike path right here on the there. left of the picture. And here's, here's the left of the two cones there. Mm -hmm. So we could take advantage of this signpost with a bike route arrow oh, to the oh, left. At, on the back side. On so the you, back side. That's, that's available to us pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing I think we could do there that would be what, simple. Where are, you, where are you suggesting? So that yeah, sign that right there, uh -huh. that's actually a sign that tells you to obey the cycling laws, mm -hmm. which should probably be on this side. But I think, I think that got flipped around when the outfall pipe thing was going on. We could put a bike route sign right there with an arrow to the left that would be it's available space, the post is already in the ground. It's a, it's a sign and a couple of bolts. Well, that would be good, but I still think we need something right there in the path like we have right now. Well, that, yeah, that, we don't wanna do, no, we don't no, wanna- No, we, we wanna definitely no, keep that. We don't yeah. wanna replace that, no. No, no, just- No, as Kevin said, we could have a bollard there, we could have something six feet tall, and the people that are gonna go through are gonna keep going through. Well, right. It's not gonna matter. Right. It's such a weird bike path. It, you know, people wouldn't expect that two-lane bike path there going, you know. We've, we've been fighting that battle for, I think, four years. It finally, and from what I've read, 
uh, the city's responsible for that in terms of out to the. We take care of that. Right. So. Oh, the new trail, the, the extension out these, of town. These lanes. Right. These are these are lanes. We can't call it a trail. Those are lanes. This is a path. This is lanes. Right. <laughs> and then Gordon's Pond is a trail. And Junction and Breakwater is a trail. I'm, or trails. Those are technically yeah. trails. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's all no, this. It's all trail. Okay. Yeah. We've got a trail extension. Path, trail, lanes. Got all kinds of fun well, stuff. And it, well, it's well, a little hard for me to tell looking at this uh, picture. I'm not good at judging dimensions. I'll take but, one landscape and but, it'll be a little easier to look at. But the whatever that you want to call those sticks are that are coming straight Those are up called and, vertical delineators. Vertical delineators. Yes. If part of the problem is cyclists who are just going to go where they want to go, would it make it a little bit more difficult for them to do that on impulse and at speed if there were a few more of those vertical delineators so they couldn't just simply... There's a lot more there today than there were a week ago. Right. So and, I'll, and I'll take a new picture yeah. of landscape. And I, 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 did we put those in or did the state put... Del Del. Del, Del. Okay. I'm sorry. So, so some, some of those are bolted Del. and then they also have some with double stick tape. Here? I just want to show you something on here which we were talking about, which you couldn't see. But um, so this is mm -hmm. the, the sign they're talking. Oh, sure. So also to put another something on the back of that, as well as keeping that. So, you know. It might be helpful. One caution I would put with that, putting a, a, a sign facing west, would it be confusing to drivers? Like, you know, you it's have to far. really make it clear that you're trying to make a sign for bicyclists well, that's to why turn I would left. Say bike route with an arrow. Okay, just, just so that's clear well, and it wouldn't but be... And the cars are traveling this way. You'd have to cross traffic and do well, something. Well, you never... When you're coming into town, you know, people are... Drivers that way are... I, I think oh, I've sorry. told you all, I'm not a cyclist, right? I have my <laughs> one ex expedition and I'll never do it again. Um, to me, right, you got arrows on the ground. The guys are looking, right? You would think you got a sign with an arrow to the left. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you can clearly see the delineators coming in to restrict it. Putting more stuff out there is not going to stop anybody from doing. It isn't that. going to stop. No anybody. matter what we do. Well, but just I making those things more nice obvious. To put that, I think putting that bike path <laughs> sign there would be good. That would help. Well, I'll go back to well, my previous statement. Darwinism will take care of that. Right? Well, no. What will happen is if that happens, no, the state will. If there's enough people who succumb there, the state will have to change that. So uh, you can't uh, foolproof everything, right? No, You've done, no, we've done everything I think reasonable to make that as safe as we can make it. You got arrows on the ground, you got delineators, you got a sign, an arrow. If some knucklehead wants to go straight through, they're gonna go straight through, unless you block it. And if you block it, then you can't have the bike lane coming out of town. Right, right. So, right. I didn't get hurt on that. Uh, well, I you, have a question. Just can't, you can't make right. well, everything accident proof. Right. You right. do what's reasonable. What's been done is gonna keep people from making the most dangerous move, right. which is a 90 degree right and going right across that way. And, and that's good. That's all really good. Now, this is what I do, or what I throw out as a suggestion. Like, I live on the south side of town. So if I'm biking from Lewis into town, there's no way I'm taking the new trail. No, I'm going to go to the Church Street Light, and I'm going to turn there and come in on the, uh, the, the sure. proper side of we the We told Anthony <laughs> that a lot of times. Now, should but, one but one you still can do that? Sure, yeah, sure. And that's what we keep but doing. But it's sort of now when I have family who are coming to visit and they want to take that trail, I have to tell them when you come back, go to the light. Don't take that trail coming back because when you come back, you're going to be forced to go into the park. You're going to have to circle around and you're going to have to come back to the traffic circle to get back to South Rehoboth, and that's more dangerous. So when you, but it's hard to tell them how to do that. I'm just wondering on that. There could be a sign there. But I, well, I gotta look and see what's he, in As they come in, you give them a choice. Go to the Church Street Light or take new, you know, trail to uh, Grove Park. You know, if, if there was some, some for bicyclists, some note, they have a choice. And if they, they put a bike box, David, up at the Church Street Light? That would be another bonus. So you could go up to that and then make that left turn safely to get to the other side, the south side of Rope. Well, as, as I'm... So. I've, Park my, I always, when I turn left there, I always put my bicycle in the middle just so nobody tries to squeeze past me to turn left. Mm. And, and I've, again, knock on wood, I've never had one person honk at me. I've never had one person bump me. It's, it's always been 
just fine doing that left turn and, and getting across into the bike lane on the other side of the street. It works really well. Yeah. It's, it's really standard, normal to me. And, and most cyclists, that's what they do. That's where they're going. Everyone we ever talk to that, that does cycling, I'm not going to take those new lanes. No way. Unless I'm going to the museum or the park or the farmer's market. Or you're going, or, 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 or going to the bike path. Yeah, or unless so you're, you are heading up him. Some, right. people, some people do the loop and they do it that way. But my sense is that most people stop and do something in town before they go loop around. That's my Could sense. Be. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah. the, the, the spandex guys are just going to go. Right. Yeah, but I can but, tell you just at the farmer's market, there's a number <laughs> of people who just kind of are coming by and keep going on Hanlopen Avenue to Gordon's Pond. So. And that route's easy. That's, that, that's, that's good. That's, that makes them. sense. Because yeah. that keeps them from having to cross the avenue and right. cross back. Correct. It's so. great. So. Okay. So a through cyclist, that's ideal for them. Right. Do we want to make that request then of uh, like Anthony or one of those guys say, would you entertain putting a bike box on? Absolutely. I, I would support that suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to get you on the other side. We do. Yeah. And so then I, really more cyclists will be there mm -hmm. than are ever in those two that just got painted. And, and I like the comment earlier about educating people about the bike box because uh, my brother-in-law, who's a biker, I mean, he does this loop daily mm -hmm. from Lewis to here to back. Uh, he didn't know what a bike box was. So it's not just the drivers and dumb people like me. I mean, it's cyclists it's a, it's as well. It's a metropolitan area thing. So if, it's if, a city if thing. If you have like a link or could point us in the right direction, we can get Lynn to publish something, you know, on the social media and get it out. Because, hey, is something new out there at this intersection? Not in town, but, you know, it's our bikers. Putting um, it on next and, and try to educate them a little bit because uh, people just don't know. I mean, I, can I we give Can we give Chris flood something positive to write uh, about the city and and ask him to give a description sure. and I, and I alan hanny uh, I, I think you know he alan's looking for material get this. alan to put something in there yeah i think the cape gazette actually covered the green bike box when they were talking about opening up that extension of the trail they actually pointed it out but we've but, got but that was one day so right about just the operation of it, how, yeah, how you're right. to well a little bit i think they gave a little bit it was a little, you know. So, um, next so what we need so is a how-to on a bike bike. Write that? So, yeah, and so that would be great. And Lynn, I'm sure we Lynn will publish that for yeah, us. Yeah, send, and, she'll send and, it to me. I'll, I'll great. pass it and, by you, and then mm -hmm. we'll get it to Lynn, and they can she can put it on the website. Right. And I'll mention to Anthony. Uh, hey, would you consider putting one on the other side? That of the would be good. The usage would be like uh, ten times what those two are now. Maybe probably a probably. lot more. Probably a lot more. Okay, when are we meeting again? Well, let's talk, before we um, start talking about that, let's talk about the idea minutes, okay. of future agenda items. So, um, let's see. The truth of the matter is our old business, were, both of those were infrastructure items, okay? So we're gonna put on the agenda next time our infrastructure for crosswalks, bicycles, whatever, infrastructure projects prioritize, and we'll bring them all, all of them up. So if you have, send me your list in terms of what you believe, um, not prioritize, but what you want to discuss, and then I'll put those all on the agenda for next time, okay? Um, <clears throat> the... Um, the wayfinding signs. You're just gonna you're gonna take a look at that. He, he, yeah, he's. I think he's already sent them to you, and you're gonna send him any additional ones. Mm -hmm. right? I think another one this afternoon. Right, yeah. um, okay. So, anything else that we need on the next agenda besides starting to talk about these infrastructure projects? Are there the, the, the the motorized stuff all got addressed by the board of commissioners, right? Yes. Yes. Because. My neighbor takes the new bike lane to go to Revelation on his scooter. Um, we're, we're driving by. Are you kidding me? His, Can scooter, I see his scooter from Scooter City is, it's perfect. Yeah, I, I don't want to hijack this discussion, okay. but maybe for uh, an upcoming agenda item, can we discuss uh, electric bicycles and uh, motor scooters, 
Uh, I have a lot of questions about what they qualify for or as and do not qualify for or as. And as a driver and a casual bicycle user, I think that if I need the information, perhaps other people do as well. And can we get that information out? Yes, because it's, it, it's, Pat can probably, there's a whole thing that went before the commissioners, right? The code was being changed. Okay. Right, we okay. have changed the code. Because now but, there are hoverboards that, that have one wheel. Right, we had to change things that because of one wheel type things. Right. But um, what really is, isn't addressed per se, and I don't think this is, I think this is probably true in the state. I don't think there's um, any specific laws right now. There's for, an e-bike e law, um, 750 watt motor, 20 miles an hour, which is the throttle bikes have blown that out of the water. There's guys racing around Gordon's Pond. It's nothing we can do out there. Nothing. There's nothing we can do out there. Yeah. The 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 motors are getting stronger, and they're no longer pedal assist. They're just twist and go. So it's a whole different ball game. And well, that that really is just like a regular scooter, it just doesn't look like a regular scooter. You know? Bicycle, and you can park it in a bike rack, and I have one, there, there, I, I have a pedal assist one. I refuse to get one that you just do that. It's, it's no cardio, but they can go fast. Oh yeah, my wife see them all they the time. They can go fast, and, and the plus side of it to me is that at least it's a bicycle that arguably the vast majority of people have grown up with. The little scooters that you got a couple feet on with a little handlebar, you didn't grow up with one of those, and you're riding without a helmet, and one friend of mine got 16 stitches off of one of those things, and one guy had to have his jaw wired off of one of those things. They're, they're really dangerous. I wonder if and it makes sense, to, I mean, it sound, may sound crazy, but should there be speed limits on the bike path? Well, they're in Dell Dot's 20 miles an hour. Yeah, but people don't but know that. I, no, throttle, I didn't know that. Throttle bike will blow right through. The, well, it's not. It's never posted. Right. Well, well what can't it's, it's in the state code laws, but nobody whatever. Knows that. No. Nobody knows that. We, Bruce and I looked it up a while ago because we were curious. Like, there's got to be something, and there is. Well, what, can, what I see that, that catches my eye a lot are people, guys on long boards, long skateboards. They're just, you know, With the pole? No pole. I didn't see the pole. I even saw one coming north on Highway 1 that stopped and made a left-hand turn on Bay Vista. He was just lined up there with the cars and made the left-hand turn across the southbound lane. When, with I'm the not light. sure where we are, if we're in open discussion or if we're considering future agenda this is, items. This is future items, which um, it's supposed but, to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we're, I, we're I'm wondering if, and, yeah, again, is a future agenda item uh, development of uh, information that can be shared with retail providers right. of these things. We have lots of things on wheels. I'm amazed, yeah. and they keep coming right. out with more. Right, and if that, when that agenda item comes up, uh, I can add information that the Homeowners Association uh, recently put together a brochure, and, and that's going out, and that's been well received. So perhaps there's an opportunity for some partnership, and we could talk about that more uh, as a part of that agenda. Okay. Because yeah, more than likely, the bike shops are selling vehicles now that exceed what Dell Dot permits. Otherwise, why would anybody buy them? In terms of their motor size and their how fast they can go. And in a way, you want to encourage that sort of thing. You want to, the bikes that could, you could commute with, right? The latest one yeah. I looked at would go 80 miles an hour. So, Whoa. yeah. Oh, but it looked like it looked like a mountain bike. Well, some of these have wide, much wider tires, and I, one, I suspect those can fly. This one did not. Again, it was a throttle bike, five grand, 80 miles an hour. So. Who's the manufacturer? It's a strange name. I, I well, didn't save it, but I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard to find. It's, well, it's, it, it actually looks really good. It, it's very stylish. Right. All right. So we but, have we'll have the e-bikes, e-scooters, potential partnership with the HOA regarding um, their brochure and how we might want to deal with these topic. This topic. I think the bike shops should forward. be be engaged in that. 
because they're the ones that probably aren't paying attention to the law either. Right. And do they do they have um, e-bikes there? The bike shops. I have. No oh yeah. Idea. Oh yes. They do. Yes. Yeah. I just yeah. ride my bike. I have no idea what else is out there. So if I see them. You can get at, at the top of the market now. There's a specialized Turbo Creo something something. It's almost ten thousand dollars, and it looks just like a road bike with drop bars. And it's got all the stuff hidden in the tube, so it doesn't look like an e-bike. Hmm. So, but what are the bike, the, the bicyclists? I mean, what are the bike shops in town? Most of most of what's being sold today are what I would call internet grade um, bicycle e-bikes. Rad Power is a very popular internet brand, and things like that. They're almost all Chinese. Okay, but so in town, they're renting these to people are coming in and renting. Yes. Them. Okay, so that's the reason we want to have the yes, bike shops involved. Absolutely. Got it. Exactly. All right. All right. Try it. You'll like it, and okay. then you'll want to buy one. And it's, it's, it's become a whole category, with lots of choices. So, arguably between a thousand and ten thousand hmm. dollars. Okay. And a lot of choices in the and in the one to two thousand range. So those are the new items, those two things that were future items that we right. right. But and, and I suspect and, we'll get we'll really drill down on these infrastructure projects. So I mean I think that's plenty for the agenda because when we start talking about each infrastructure project, it, you know, it and we'll just down. follow up with the old items too, what we talked about about the silent policemen. Yeah, on, yeah. And, we'll just follow right. up with we'll that too. Yes. Oh, under old business. Yeah. Okay. We'll confirm those those items. And the date for the next meeting. Um, do you all prefer morning or afternoon? We did the afternoon. I forget for whose schedule this time, but we did two o'clock. Morning's better, but yeah, I think I don't remember why we did the afternoon. But if we had a conflict, if it's some ten o'clock, somebody <laughs> else met at ten, and so we moved temporarily that and one Anne, time. Anne or can two. look it up too. We have the benefit, right? There's, we, can, we can give you dates, and you can see if there's something on the schedule for us. What, when do you all want to meet next? 18, 19, 25, 26 of August. 19, 19 I think, is good. That's, that's four weeks. How's that for everybody? August 19. I'll be traveling. Uh, I would be able to phone it in, but I will be out of town. Will you, is the 12th or the 26th better? You enjoy the 12th? 12th uh, is not good for me. Okay. Uh, the 26th, I am not available in the morning. I would be available in the afternoon of the 26th. I'm okay I don't have my book. I mean, I'm, most things are pretty open. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 let's shoot for 2 o'clock on the 26th. Okay. Yeah. The 26th and keeping it at 2. Got that in? Yeah. Um, Kevin, do you have anything for us? Uh, no, just, uh, let me just say, uh, you know, we were talking about bike traffic. Uh, I would just tell you, I'd spend a lot of time first thing in the morning from 6.30 to 8.30, 9 o'clock, just kind of cruising the streets. There are a lot of people lined up getting renting bikes that early in the morning. And you, a lot of those trolley, the four-seaters, are riding down the middle of the roads. Uh, I, I don't think we do a very good job, and, and they're not going to, I'm sure, but educating the folks that are just coming in here for the week and they rent a bike for a day and in the morning they're going to ride around, they just do what the heck they want, right? They're not stopping at stop signs. We're just pedaling along. Luckily, it's in the morning. There's not a lot of people coming in and out of parking spots. It scares you, but there's a lot of rentals or, uh, in the morning hours. Of, well, they're trying to hit the, the get it before 10 to hit the boardwalk, bike on the boardwalk. Sure, right? yeah, they're all That's over. part of it, yeah. yeah. And talking about a lot of the bike traffic in town, I just see it on the residential streets. I, I think they're just people renting in town. I don't see a lot of families. I don't see them as being the bikers, serious bikers taking the trails. A lot of it's just informal family. I don't like on the I don't like it on the boardwalk because I'm just dodging too many people. Well, that's you go right. too late. I never I never yeah, do they, any they can't, they can't hear me and it's <laughs> forget about it. Have to all those. It was a, Beautiful ride this morning. The weather was perfect oh, yeah. for a ride uh -huh. today. I ran so, yeah. Yeah, it's great. It was a long ride. It's uh, great. All right, and you have to ride more, I guess. I guess I will. <laughs> <laughs> <You're not. laughs>
Are you going to go on get an e-bike? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. The, the e-bike, I got it to ride up the hills in Arlington. Yeah. Because my elevation to and from my office, thankfully, I'm not going there anymore, but I would get 700 feet of, of net oh. elevation. 700 feet? Yeah. Really? Yeah, net. Because so Strava takes... Take it, takes. Guys, a, I got to like take you, off. Can't, yeah, are we adjourned? We're, we're adjourned. Yes, we're adjourned. Sorry, we're adjourned.